Little Big is a 1981 World Fantasy Award winning novel by John Crowley. Uh, I actually listened to uh, an audiobook version uh, read by John Crowley, which is apparently from a uh, a revised a, a re revised um, kind of. 25th or something like that anniversary anniversary text uh, even though that text actually hasn't still has not been apparently published but you can hear it on audio which is how I did um, this is very much uh, the fairies at the at the end at the end of the garden kind of a novel uh, George George um, George McDonald uh, gets re referenced in here um, I think of of, uh, of Lewis Carroll I think of of uh, very much kind of that, that kind of a 19th century, uh, late, you know, kind of late, late 19th century, early 20th century kind of conception of, of fairy, of the fairy folk, of, of, um, not necessarily positive, happy, happy fairy folk, but just really mysterious alien, uh, fairy folk, uh, that, you know, it's with magic that violates, uh, all kind of, uh, all kind of reason, all kind of physics. Um, John Drinkwater, who uh, is at, at the at the kind of the beginning of this book, uh, comes upon uh, Violet, uh, her, Violet and her father, and it's the Theophilastic Philosophical Society, and they're talking about how it's it's bigger on the inside, and then it's bigger and bigger until you're at the very center of of this of this air of this magical area where it's basically vast vistas where heroes ride forever through fairyland um and what this turns into is very much a family saga of uh of of the drink waters uh violet marries john uh there's um she's maybe already pregnant uh that they they have uh they have daughters uh most notably uh alice Alice Daly Drinkwater, who was, becomes Daly Alice, um, and uh, the, the story opens with her intended uh, jo uh, Smoky Br Smoky Bramble uh, kind of walking walking to the family estate, the uh, Edgewater, which uh, John Drinkwater, who is an architect, uh, who who's who's kind of bizarre, weird ideas um get kind of he he retires to the country and just does and does and writes stories and does illustrations but he does make this one house this edgewater house which is like multi-sided it's got different kind of a different house on each side of it so what from depending on where you you um you you approach it it's it looks like a completely different house and indeed this house seems to be the locus the door into uh into sort of fairyland and there's very much a thing of uh you know um smoky is told at the beginning of the book that he has to he has to walk there that's from the city uh and that's the only that's that's one of the conditions that he's that uh that they've been given by um a talking fish which seems to be maybe a representation of 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 these fairy folk it's one of these books where it's not it's it's when i say it's like kind of that 19th century kind of fairy thing uh it's not your tolkien uh not not even um sort of uh your your tolkien-esque kind of or conan you know fantasies with with wizards with swords or stuff like this this is very odd like we're in the real world but just off to the side, there's very kind of subtle magic going along. Uh, it kind of builds as it goes along later, but at the beginning, you might be forgiven for saying, like, oh, this doesn't seem very fantasy-ish to me, but uh, it does as it goes along. Uh, and all through this book, uh, it is also buoyed by uh, Crowley's kind of lovely, elusive, uh, dense language. Uh, he is uh, he is writing definitely in a kind of a high literary literary tone uh in some ways it's a book that it's there's such a gush of stuff i i i had been i tried to read this a couple of times before this in the actual book thing and i kind of bounced off at all those times uh and finally it's like oh it, i found it uh on the uh, as an audiobook at my at my local library and it was like okay i'll try it this way and i just sort of let the language flow over me because um, I'm a kind of plotting reader, and I have like I, if I, I think what hung me up before is I kept on stopping and trying to understand what's going on here, what's going on here, which is sort of the wrong way to try and get into a big, dreamlike, magical book like this. This is one of these books where you just sort of you jump in the deep end and you sink and you drown happily. 
<laughs> I think is how I would put it. Um, and, but that to say that the things that I kind of hung on to were a lot of the very kind of human uh, relationships uh, in this book of, uh, of, of lost wives, of lost fathers, of, 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 of just har the hardness of, um, of making connections. Uh, there's a section um, later, later in the book where Smokey is, who's now an old, an old, old man is uh, kind of interacting with his son, his son, Ob his son Oberon. And Smokey looked at, up at his tall son through the whole of their lives together, it had been as though he and Oberon had been back to back, fixed that way and unable to turn. They had had to communicate by indirections through others or by craning their necks and talking out of the sides of their mouths. They had to guess at each other's faces and actions. Now and then one, of the, one or the other would try a quick spin around to catch the other una unawares, but it never worked quite the other still behind and facing away, as in the old vaudeville act. And the effort of communication in that posture, the effort of making oneself clear, had often grown too much for them, and they'd given, given it up mostly. But now, maybe because of what had happened to him in the city, whatever that was, or maybe because maybe only the increase of time wearing away the bond that had both held them and held them apart, Oberon had turned around. Slowly I turned. And all the all that was left then was for Smokey himself to turn and face him. Well, he said, believe. I don't know. Believe. That's a a word. And it's like that kind of like thing of a father and a son not being able to quite not being able to see each other. That that's um I think that's a really good example of what this book can bring of uh, there was a lot of the book. I was like, Oh, am I lost? Am I, am I, am I gonna, uh, I don't know what's quite going on or what the symbology means, but um, somehow at the end of this book, it starts to kind of coalesce together. And um, this is all co also called the fairies parliament. And that fairies parliament at the end uh, is both a wake and a wedding. So there's a mourning, but there's also a union uh, and you feel, and I felt that, uh, and that was like, I, it's like, it's one of these books that I think I'm actually going to be eager to actually go back to and find more richness in, find more, more meaning. Um, it is, it's a book that's filled, filled with, filled with our culture. Um, it open it, it's interspersed with all these kind of little quotes uh, from uh, various people, various people authors throughout history uh stuff like uh the very start the very start of one men are men but man is a woman chester chesterton or uh uh here near near the end uh this is from uh by uh, samuel johnson on cymbeline to remark the folly of the fiction the absurdity of the conduct the confusion of the names and manners of different times and the impossibility of the events in any system of life were to waste criticism upon unresisting imbecility, upon faults too evident for detection and too gross for aggravation. Uh, so it's, it's a book that wears its learning on its sleeve. It's a book that challenges you that is af not afraid to leave you floundering um there's a lot of i it's one of these things of like there's a lot of the characters in the book just don't know what the hell's going on and it's sort of like you are inducted into the family uh as well this drink water family and are and are kind of at sea i mean i think maybe if i have a criticism i sometimes feel like maybe some of the women are used as kind of these as kind of symbols of a nobility, which I guess, you know, coming from male author, that would, that's that, you know, as a, as a male, you look at female and you think, huh? Whereas I'm sure women or others look at each other. And it's like, but it is also one of these books where everybody uh, is, is that separate. Everyone is facing back to back and you're trying to turn to see, but you can't. Uh, and, um, and also just at the, the beautiful, I'll just leave you with the, 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 the final images of this book, uh, is of decay of all the lights going out. Uh, and, um, it felt like it's the lights going out on a universe. Uh, and that could be our universe. Uh, that, that kind of, that kind of beautiful kind of, 
uh, how how all of us, our world, our uh, all of this civilization, uh, our existence of human beings in general is just we are a blip in time, and when we're gone, everything will grow over, and the lights will go out, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, John Crowley, little big, uh, a challenge. And uh, something you have to jump into with both feet and drown. Please, just drown and uh, enjoy. Okay, more videos later.